Hello and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast, where my guests and I share tips to help and inspire you to build a great personal brand, to increase your authority and visibility. I am your host, Claire Bond, and on today's episode, I'm very excited to welcome Caleb Gardner. Caleb is the co-founder of the innovative consulting firm, 18 Coffees, and author of the new book, No Point B, Rules for Leading Change in the Hi- New Hyperconnected Radically Conscious Economy. Caleb's career has spanned from working at Edelman and Bain and Company to running President Obama's Twitter account. Caleb's insights about building more ethical and effective companies have been featured in publications publications such as NBC News, Wired, Crane, um, Cranes, BBC News, and Cheddar TV. Caleb, thank you so much for being here. A mouthful. Great. You have an amazing resume. Yeah, I was impressed how, <laughs> how well you got through that. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I guess uh, what I see your book behind you. Um, but I feel like, you know, the, the thing that really is on everyone's mind now that I, I mentioned that is, well, two questions. Did you run POTUS or at Barack Obama? I think I know the answer to that, but for our audience. Yeah, it was at Barack Obama. And I'm impressed, honestly, that you even know okay. the difference. So you were you were paying well, close enough attention to know kind of the the ins and outs of how the uh, the I actually I actually have a government um, degree, so I, you go. I know a fair amount about political things. Kind of, uh, I know not to di- to dip my toe into that into that pond. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> but, right. I mean, uh, so were you were you running it during his presidency, or was it was it after? Yeah, during the second administration. I guess half of the the kind of craziness that was the eight Obama years was, um, you know, yeah. I was standing on the shoulders of giants, people that had been running it for a while. And, and we were really, you know, grateful to be doing it at a time where we were, we were not only with social changing, but, you know, a lot of the um, uh, policies of the second administration were pretty, pretty important. What is the difference between you know the POTUS account and the at the Barack, at Barack Obama, like what what is the difference? I mean, especially for him. I mean, you know, it who who knows about other presidents, but like what specifically was the difference in your role? Yeah, so um, coming into '08 when he first took office, well, I guess he took office in '09, got elected in '08. Um, you know, the relationship between public social media accounts of elected individuals and their office was something that was relatively new. And so um, mm-hmm. people like Barack Obama said, I'm bringing these personal assets that used, that I used to get me elected into public office, but I don't necessarily want them to become part of the office of the presidency. I want them to become still part of the person of Barack Obama, the community organizer, mm-hmm. the, the professor, the, you know, all the things he would, he would bring into the office and then keep doing, you know, in his post-presidential life. He really pioneered a model that a lot of politicians have since followed of having both a personal account and a an office based account that would shift depending on who was the office holder. So at POTUS became which didn't actually launch until I think 2015 um, Mm. became uh, the office holding Twitter account of the presidency and at Barack Obama remains his personal account. So during he, his administration, we were using that megaphone to um, support the president's policies. And oftentimes people thought that the at Barack Obama account was still the person. And so we were even in the media, we were often confused with, you know, being the voice of Barack Obama himself. So it was something that we were very conscious yeah. of. Um, but that that's really the difference is, um, you know, most office holders now have both of those kind of dynamics. And some of that has to do with, you know, respecting the office. Some of it has to do with legal, um, you know, telecom kinds of, or, or, or like um, Hatch Act and other types of regulation around how you communicate and how you have to archive communication coming from um, the presidency and other, other offices. So, you know, there's lots of reasons for it, but I will say that yeah. the guy who came into office after us really just completely ignored most of that and just used his personal account the entire time anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, and yeah. I guess like announcements would be, you know, used on, on the POTUS one. I, I guess like yeah. one of the things that um, 
I, th- I think that that is a good model. I mean, I feel like sometimes CEOs or people that, um, you know, are executives at a company, they don't kind of want to lose themselves. And mm-hmm. there's this kind of brand messaging that has to happen from like a corporate level or from a political level that you don't want associated with the personal brand. Would you kind of right. say that that's essentially what was done? Because I mean, his, you know, Barack Obama's Twitter account was used to kind of build that brand during, mm-hmm. you know, before, during, and after his presidency. Yeah, I think there's, that's fair. I mean, I would, I don't know that he would have, or the team would have categorized it like that at the time. I think it was, okay. it was partially because, um, again, just legally how you go about like maintaining the records of communication from the White House during that time was Got so it. new and no one had ever yeah. done it using a Twitter account before. Right. So they were kind of figuring it out. So some of it, mm-hmm. honestly, were, were people smarter than me trying to figure out how to continue using the digital assets that they had pioneered during the election and do an end run a little bit around, you know, these kind of archaic rules around uh, the presidency. So it, it was yeah. it was a fascinating time because every everything that we were doing was pretty much no one had ever done before. Well, I mean, and, and you kind of pioneered that like you're like, OK, this is now the policy. Right. Kind of made that a policy. So that's awesome. And I think a lot of people are kind of can use that as, you know, obviously they may not have all the 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 legal rules and things that they need to follow. But I do think that from a standpoint of um, something you can you can take away with you, it is yours versus the POTUS stays with the office. Right. You know, a company handle or whatever it is will stay with that company and you can kind of leave and go. Right. That's, that's kind of way that I'm, I'm kind of looking at it from a, from a standpoint of a personal brand. Yeah. Um, cause I do get that question about. sometimes of like, how can you keep them separate? I'm like, well, there you go. That's how you keep yeah, them Yeah. It's interesting <laughs> to think about like if, oh God, let's say Elon Musk, who's apparently about to take over Twitter, ha- keeps his Elon Musk account, but creates a separate account that is specifically about like who's running Twitter, the CEO of Twitter. I think that's right. that's interesting yeah. to think about because I guess one would not necessarily have to be a little bit more formal, have to kind of represent the org. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, uh, we all know that he likes to have his own voice and his own personality, and he's running multiple companies right. anyway. Um, so you know, that could be it could be an interesting solution. Yeah, it'd be, you have the official voice <laughs> and the non. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm just going to say whatever stream of consciousness. There's a few people out there, won't name names, that uh, do that a little, a little kind of. You're like, whoa, right? Uh, I, my husband always jokes, "Was that my out loud voice?" Yeah, that was. <laughs> it was out loud on Twitter, and there it is. That's there it right. Is. That's right. <laughs> so, what what are some things since you were kind of pioneering at that point? What are some some things that you learned? Some best practices for, you know, using social media, things that you learned, maybe that didn't work, things that Mm -hmm. you still use today? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's it. There are definitely things that I learned. And some things that I still use today, both both kind of personally, but also just with my clients, I, I would say that social has changed so much, though, like since since I left my role with the Obama organization in 2016. I mean, it's completely different environment. I mean, this is it was a different environment when we I joined the organization in 2013 than when I left in 2016. So this is the nature of the beast. Like you kind of have to follow what are the mm-hmm. platforms doing? What are users of the platforms want to see in terms of content and engagement? So maybe that is, you know, part of how I learned to move quickly with, you know, list our ear to the ground on the internet of what, what do people actually want? I think that was true mm-hmm. back then. It's still true today. But I think what yeah. I always look like to look at are what are the things that don't change too? You know, like what are the what are the things about especially speaking on behalf of a powerful uh, person um, that would be true then and would be true now? I think people still value authenticity; that they still um, want to to you know uh, connect on some kind of authentic level with people. I think we've seen in the last few years, Elon Musk being a great example, the boundaries of that and when authenticity becomes grading a little bit on people, like maybe we don't need to hear from you so much. <laughs> so there's, there's definitely uh, still some guidance that can be given to people about where to be authentic and maybe where to uh, um, be a little quieter and, and let some issues play out without your voice <laughs> needing to weigh in on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, I feel like, 
because you have a you now people now have a platform they feel that they should say uh, you know right. make an input on everything and you're just like sometimes you're just like i i yeah can you yeah. just shut up <laughs> yes sometimes it is more yeah. appropriate to just not weigh in yes i think yeah. that's 100 percent true and yeah. it was true in our time Completely too. like sometimes agree. when news was breaking when there was a school shooting for example and we didn't have all the information um you know, a going quiet was our number one strategy, like shut everything down until we know more. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's lots of parallels. I think no matter what platform you're using, no matter what your um, where you're trying to audience build, where you're trying to brand build, I think I think there are things that don't change about how to do it well. Um, and then there are things that are timeless. Right. And there are things that are timely in terms of keeping up yeah. with what what helps you build an audience? Where are the platforms going? Where, what do people want to hear? Yeah. Well, and, and I think using Barack Obama and Elon Musk as two examples, I think those are, you know, maybe, you know, Beyonce, people like that, uh, that literally <laughs> yeah. like follows no one, but th th what they do isn't always a good example for what a regular person building their brand should do. Because like you yeah. were saying, you know, you do have that megaphone and you do have that that ability to just be out there and talking and everyone will be attracted to it because they want to know what you say. But right. until you get to that point, you have to be part of the community. Um, do you agree yeah. with that? Like you have to actually engage with people. I mean, I don't think Barack Obama is like out there, like, you know, commenting no. on people's things and things like that to build his visibility. He already had visibility. That's a hundred percent right. Intentionally not would he want to engage directly yeah. with an individual human being because they would then become the story. Right. Like it would be an un right. a light, unflattering light shined on a ra some random person he responded to on the Internet. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's interesting to think about this. I've talked about this publicly a little bit that I think community engagement actually flips at that scale where and especially mm -hmm. if you're in politics where it's already a little bit divisive, you you right. see the best and the worst of the Internet. Like the people that respond are the people that love you no matter what or hate you no matter what. But mm -hmm. at any kind of scale underneath that, it, to your point, community engagement looks like a normal kind of bell curve. Like you might have people that are like your promoters and love everything you do. You might have people that are your detractors and hate everything you do. But really, most people are kind of in that normative middle. And sometimes you engage with them and you connect with them. Sometimes they ignore you. Sometimes you ignore them. But it's, it's a lot more human of a way to you know build an audience. And I think to your point, um, you have to be cognizant of... Like I'm, I'm, this is more of a community I'm building and not just an audience. I think Elon Musk has an audience, but most people are building some kind of community. Yeah. I like that. That's, yeah. a, that's a good distinction right there. Audience versus community. Yeah. Um, but cause a lot of people use it as if they have an audience, you know, I'm going to stand sure. up with my megaphone and just talk and everyone's going to be come to me and you're like, nope, you don't have a, you know. The That's right. I kind of look at it like I mean, you know, storefront, like in Times Square or something. Yeah, you don't have the foot traffic going by that's just going to come to you. It doesn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know. So we have to have different. We have different rules. We haven't, you know, gotten into that audience um, place yet. Yeah. So that that is a good well, distinction. <laughs> What's tough about it is that like you, in order to build an audience, in order to, or in, in order to build a community, like you have to do things as if you have an audience as if people are listening and interested, right. you have to be kind of consistent about putting your POV out there, but you have to mm -hmm. balance it with that more human, like getting people's interactions, you know, really, really showing your own authenticity and humanity. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking really from a very personal place. I mean, trying to build a quote unquote audience for the book that I just released, you know, I was constantly being like, Yes, I want to keep talking about the ideas in the book, but also I don't just want to hear myself talk all the time. Like I want, I want like feedback and engagement and people to, to like engage with the ideas, tell me what they like, tell me what they don't like. So it takes a right. lot of intentionality to, to audience build well in a way that, that feels more community, more like community. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's kind of the thing. I mean, cause sometimes people, I feel like they're hesitant to do that because they're like, well, they should just find me. And you're like, well, you have to go and find them. You have yeah. to see, you have to be, you know, interested in what they're doing to do, really build that, build an audience, especially when you're starting from zero. Yeah, um, you don't you just, really have you know, to do that. They don't uh, just come to you. 
what's that what's that scene i think it's in that in that one will smith movie uh hitch where he says a good way to the best way to kiss is you go 90 and they go 10 like that's that's really how i think about <laughs> audience like you're remember going that line. you're going 90 percent of the but way i don't remember that line <laughs> I just there you go. Them. Yeah, you're going ninety percent away. You can let no, them come it's... ten, but any more than that, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because you're trying. Yeah, you, otherwise, it's just kind of like, uh, what do they want? Right? Yeah. You, yeah, you have to go in there. Like, so you make these people. You know, you don't make them think that you care. You actually care. You go in yes. there and you care, and then we'll believe it. That's the whole authenticity part of it. That's right. One of the things that I that I know that I deal with with my clients is that people are afraid to put themselves out there. And sometimes when mm. they put themselves out there, their friends are the first ones to say, you know, that photo isn't flattering. You <laughs> had a typo or whatever else, right? And I mean, I've been, you know, I'm a former actress. I've, you know, done a lot of, you know, influencer work. So I am used to my friends. They're not alone, no longer my friends, but people doing that. And so yeah. I have pretty thick skin and I can only imagine what it's like for someone like Barack Obama. And you had to deal with it at kind of at the very, you know, you were know, the gatekeeper, really, but sometimes it had to kind of hurt because you were championing <laughs> that you were like, this is a post that I put out. I was very, you know, pumped about it and everyone just eviscerated it or whatever. I mean, like, were you kind of on a roller coaster? Did it get easier? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, it's just such a unique position to be in to speak for the president, you know, like, again, going back to that, that, normative band of how an audience engages with you everyone who responded was basically it was useless feedback because it was all mm. outright hatred or mm -hmm. we love you obama this is great you know like there was there was really no oh people are responding and telling us they want this no just, yeah exactly it's just it's too much noise so okay it I think we, we handled it in stride on a day to day basis because some, you're right. Sometimes mm -hmm. things would go really well and sometimes they wouldn't, but I'd say most of the time when they didn't go well, it wasn't necessarily like, Oh, this is causing, <laughs> this is causing Josh Ernest to have to get asked about us at a press briefing. That's what really gave me a heart attack is like something going so bad yeah. that it creates a political moment that then becomes a problem for the president. Yeah. Um, it was more, it would go bad in that it would fall flat. And I think that's really what mm. is relatable to anyone who's trying to, to do this well is that, you know, 80% of what you're going to put out there is just, it's just not, people aren't going to see it. People aren't going to interact with it. They're going to go, oh, that's interesting. You know, it's just going to feel really flat. And then sometimes you have things that go really well. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we always kept our eye on the larger goal of policy change legislation, you know, like those were the things that were really emotional days for us and something really went our way mm -hmm. or really didn't go our way. It's great. Yeah. It's great context um, to give yourself to be like worried about people getting healthcare instead of worried about like how yeah. many retweets this is getting, you know, like it's just, it, yeah. it's great. Uh, it the really puts things stuff. in perspective. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Right. I feel, I feel like that. Yeah. I, I used to do PR for a financial services firm and it's what I decided I didn't, wasn't loving it anymore. Mm -hmm. It was because I was like, you know, we're not curing cancer. We're not trying to help anyone. <laughs> we're just trying yeah. to, it just didn't feel authentically me. And I was like, I would rather do something where I actually, you know, yeah, do something that's more me. And yeah, if you, I, I would kind of identify with that where you're just kind of like, I actually, yeah, you can, and, and I guess it's easier to kind of take criticism or not when it, it truly is just kind of like white noise. It's either, yeah, the I love you or you suck. You're like, okay, well, yes, yeah. you get the, the same people over and over. <laughs> yep. Right. It, I mean, it just completely becomes noise, but I think I relate it back just on a personal level to, you know, a lot of the advice you get when you are when you are going through a hard time, you are trying to accept criticism or you are just, you know, you're just going through it in one way or another is to give back is to focus on things outside of your own body, outside of your own, you know, day to day, like um, whether that's volunteering or sending a note to someone you love or, you know, like any of that kind of um, expressing gratitude externally, focusing on a, a mission that matters. 
that's what I learned, you know, working for the president more than anything else was like when you're when you're focused on the mission, the rest doesn't really matter that much. It's like, did it work? It didn't. OK, great. We're going to move on. Um, do we get some criticism? Probably. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to keep our eye on the ball, you know. Well, so what did you learn, um, you know, after after running um, Barack Obama's Twitter account? What did you learn when you had to be like, OK, I'm going to build my own personal brand? What are some things that you <laughs> that you took away and you, you started implementing for yourself? Oh, what a great question. I mean, I learned that it's hard and I don't have, I don't have a team of like five people doing it for me. Like, like the president yeah. did. I mean, it's just, it takes a lot more resources to be online engaging consistently with good quality content than I think most people who get started doing it realize. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like very discouraging for them very quickly because they realize the content demand is so much. And like I said, 80% of it's falling flat. So it doesn't feel worth it. Um, I think right. I came out of working for the president and, and just being in the digital, you know, social space for a long time before that with a good head on my shoulders about what it would take to actually build a personal brand. I also think that mm -hmm. again, working for the president just keeps you super humble in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. And so I'm not, I'm also just very realistic about like, yeah, I run a consulting firm and I um, wrote a book and I love that a fact that I did both of those things. But I'm also, you know, dropping my kid off at school in the morning and, you know, making dinner and just have my feet on the ground um, a lot more so than I think people who kind of get in their head about their own brand. If anything, yeah. I'd say that it's a, it's a very humbling experience to um, to work, you know, in politics in general because it's such a such a slog. But I think it, it just gives me perspective about anything that came after it. It's like, is this a crisis? No, I've been in a crisis. This is not a crisis, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Those, you, you've seen like, yeah, that's like the such, yeah. Can't even yeah. imagine. <laughs> you always see like they go in with dark hair, they come out with white hair. You're that's like, right. Well, exactly. What happened that's in those eight saying. years? I, that was literally me. Like, I was like much more gray now. Uh, did you sleep much? I mean, was it like, did you just work like <laughs> 16 hour plus days? I mean, were, were your phone, did you sleep with your phone? <laughs> I mean, did you have to? That's, I had some late nights for sure. But I, I think the nice thing about um, running online communication is that, you know, with the few exceptions, most people are asleep at night and they're not going to like see a yeah. tweet from the president at 3 a.m. even if we were up to send it. So, you know, we mostly just right, right, right. were able to, you know, focus our time in on the time when people were paying the most attention, which meant that with some mm -hmm. very rare exceptions, we weren't... Um, the government shut down in 2013 comes to mind because it shut down literally at midnight because the budget expired. So we were mm. up late that night waiting to see if the government was going to shut down. That, so things like that happened. But, yeah. you know, other than that, we were we worked pretty, pretty reasonable hours for the most part, which was just good. I think what, kind of what, what you said previously about kind of having a realistic view of, yeah, it's not it's not like critical and yeah, also right. kind of. You're talking about work-life balance. I think ultimately this is what I tell people when they are like, what do I do with my personal brand? How do I do it? I want to be this, this person that does everything. I'm like, well, they probably have a team just like what you said. Yeah. Um, and bite off what you can chew. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so much, I mean, yeah, it's, there's so much to do in a day and there's so many responsibilities that we have. Um, you know, I mean, God, yeah. I'm like, literally, I, I'm always thinking about like the list of things of like the, that I've got to do like around my house. That's what always kind of like stresses <laughs> me out. You just kind of look at your life and you're like, okay, you know what? You got to prioritize things. And, and yeah, it, it social media isn't the be all end all and having some troll go off on you about a typo or <laughs> right. something or some negative comment in the scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Right. Right. I, I mean, I, I think of it as like, you know, when they talk about building healthy habits, they talk about you can't just come out and say, I'm going to work out four or five days a week and I'm going to, you know, control what I eat. And I'm going to do, you know, all these things that make our body and our mind feel better. You have to kind of add one or two at a time, you know, like you really, yeah. it's it, the mental load for changing your behavior is a lot. And so you have to take it kind of one step at a time and, and then kind of build, like let those successes build 
on themselves. And then eventually Mm -hmm. you've changed your whole life because you've changed one habit at a time. I think building a brand is a lot like that, right? Like you focus in on the things that matter the most first. You try to get those really tight, really under control. Maybe you focus on one platform, for example, you build an audience on TikTok, you build an audience on Instagram, whatever it is for you. Um, and, but you do it well. You don't spread yourself thin across mm-hmm. a thousand things. And then you start adding to, to it when you, when you really master that and you've got it down and you've got a good habit, you like, you start adding other habits. It's very similar. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this laughing because I have not done that well. Like I, I feel like I do a couple of things really well and I still am bad about like adding new things to it. So like I'm, you know, yeah. take my own advice. <laughs> I know. No, I'm, I, I like that you said that because I am somebody like, oh, I, I have struggled for a long time with getting exercise in my routine. I, I don't yeah. know. It's been a, a long time. Um, and I'm kind of sporadic at it. And then all of a sudden I'll get like, I'll get an app or something and I'll be like, oh, I'm so excited. Like, and I'm going to do all these exercises, but then it's too right. much and I end up hurting myself. That's right. So yeah. I can't work out. Because it, just like you said, I was like, I jumped in and they don't, they don't say, okay, like, I, I never say that I'm like, you know, I'm not like super, super unfit. I can hike and I can, I do regular walks with my dogs and things like that. But yeah, <laughs> like I, you have to like slowly step into it. And I found an app that I actually super like, um, that literally has gone very slowly for me. Mm. And so I haven't injured myself because they weren't like, okay, we're going to, you're going to lose, you're going to, you know, t- you know, firm up, do all these things in one month. And we're going to like, you're going to be dead. <laughs> right. Yes. They, it's too much. Yep. So I, I like that. You have yeah. to take little steps. Yeah. I'm laughing because I do the exact same thing where I'm like, I get really excited about it. And then I just <sighs> kill myself for like a week and then I'm too sore to do it. And then like, it's just, it's not a good way to like yeah. create habits. I, I, I do it over and over and over again. It's I not. I mean, like I like literally, I, I, if anyone's that know like the beach body, I did like Shanti insanity. <laughs> insane. Totally. True I don't to even know. Name. I can't even remember what truly insane. He doesn't even do that anymore. I think he's like, he kind of like set it down. Cause he was like the original insanity was so freaking insane. He's stepped it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it was just, it's too much. And there are some people God bless them that can go through the whole thing and get all ripped. But I was like, you know, what? <laughs> that wasn't me. My body was like, enough. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Pull something, something hurts. I'm like, okay. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I learned my own limitations. So that is a really good analogy to put that with, uh, with branding as well, because right? we have to know our limitations. And if there's anything you learn with age, it's, you know, pace yourself, right? Just yeah. like, do, I mean, if you set yeah. out to say like, I want to become the top influencer in X, and then you go out and you build a website and you hire a team and you start to do every single social platform, you want to do this, you want to do that. You're going to either burn your mental energy out or your, your wallet. Like you're going to spend mm-hmm. insane. What's the fast, cheaper good. Like you're going to either spend an insane amount of money yeah. on things that don't actually work. Cause you haven't put in the like time right. to make them work. Um, or you're yes. just going to burn yourself out. And, and I think the best, the best strategy is always to look for the long term and try to create better habits that eventually will lead to the place that you want to go. That that's what has worked for me in so many different areas of life is just focusing on like what am I doing today that is going to in small ways contribute to the better future tomorrow and not try to focus so much. I'm like I'm preaching to myself right now. Not try to focus so much on what's yeah. the next milestone or the thing that where I want to go. That's where it's always been successful for me. But I, I think to, to add to that, I think once you kind of take that time and you, you, when you are true with what, with what works for you, you will be authentic. Yes. Exactly. You. Yeah. And that will connect with your audience if you're, yeah. So I think that, um, you know, it, it all, it all boils, you know, to one thing. It's like, yeah, yeah. you have to be truly you. You have to pace yourself. It does take time. Because you're not going to learn your voice, you're not going to know who you are. You get people, yeah, all of those you things. You can bring people along it. the way, right? Like that's what's fun about yeah. doing it that way is you can you can learn with exactly. people that when you do it like yes. that. I love yeah. that. Well, so ba- I would I would love I always like to kind of like round out the end where we kind of say give throw it to you just to share three tips 
for the audience. So I'm going to, I mean, it could just be three tips that you've learned while running, you know, the president's uh, Twitter account, It'd be anything that you want. I'm going to kind of open it up to you. Um, mm. Hopefully I don't stump you on that one, but three <laughs> tips that you want to share um, to help the audience out. Yeah. I mean, just, a, I feel like we've talked about so many things that you've brought out of me yeah. that I've learned over the past uh, uh, 10 years. I mean, I think one, just coming from the scale and the, the, you know, just risk that we were, we were undertaking every single day is that compared to that, nothing else is really that important. Like if you can keep things in perspective, um, you will have a much more healthy, fun engagement with life every day. So that, that would be my first is like, mm -hmm. find a way to have some perspective, find the context for the thing that you want to do like really get engaged in that context, but you can have perspective on everything else and everything's not going to feel like an emergency or like you, you drop the ball or, you know, like the world's going to end before the next day. You know, I think that's, that's super mm -hmm. helpful. The second thing I would say is related to, I think I learned this when working for the president. I think I learned it, you know, in my daily life, like we were just talking about. I think I learned it in my everyday work. I learned it writing the book is that, um, Small habits do build up and really can be life changing. I'll give you an example with the book. Mm. I um, wrote it 30 minutes a day at my kitchen table in the mornings before I did anything else. Like the only real way that I could write a book while running a consulting firm and having a family and all kinds of different um, you know things that dominated my everyday life that were also important was to take a small amount of time before anything else happened that day and do it. And when it was done, I would stop and I would go do other things. So um, I think that could be applied to so many things, building a social media audience, you know, do it, anything, just set aside a little bit of time. Don't, don't try to don't, what's the, uh, what's the adage? The only way to, the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. There's some, there's some uh, saying like that, you know, I've like never heard that one. <laughs> Sounds kind of gross. I don't, it is, it's a gross, maybe I'm butchering it, but you get the idea, <laughs> right? Like it's one bite yeah. at a time. Um, yeah. So that, that would be my second one. Um, and then I guess my third one is surround yourself with people, especially who can give you perspective on, um, on life, like who can be connect connection, who can, who can make you feel loved beyond just an online audience, which isn't real love anyway. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that can really, um, really just uh, like remind you why we're here in the first place, why we even yeah. want the goals that we want. Um, that's been something that's been very helpful for me in a few very stressful years. It's just like you know, ways to mm -hmm. people that help me keep my feet on the ground, you know? Yeah, especially the, the third one. I can definitely relate to that one. Um, I've definitely gotten, yeah, it was kind of like it, I had to kind of sh get rid of, it sounds so horrible, but kind of end my relationship with certain people where it wasn't really sure. a good relationship. Um, and so, yeah, I just had to kind of just say, you know what, this, is, this isn't, I, I need to put my energy into people that kind of put their energy into me. You know, it's like yeah. a better fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that does help you with everything in your life when mm -hmm. you don't have a stressful relationship in any way. Yeah. Someone who spent a lot of time like online, people who can give you offline context and offline relationships where you can realize the internet is not actually reality is always very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I love that. Oh, this has been such an absolutely fun conversation. Um, so where can people find you? They want to connect with you. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm at Caleb Gardner pretty much everywhere online. CalebGardner.com. You can go to CalebGardner.com slash books and, and hear about No Point B and buy No Point B if you're interested. So pretty pretty universally available at Caleb Gardner. Probably too available at um, Caleb Gardner online. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Caleb, for being here. It was a fun conversation. I really enjoyed it. And thank you for listening and watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.